I just made a disc sander from a washing machine motor thanks to your videos. It works fine and I've added a speed controller to it. Is this okay? Can I use voltage or current reduction devices to lower the AC voltage and run an AC motor at a lower speed? So the speed of an induction motor is based on line frequency. Line frequency here in the US is 60 Hertz. Many places in Europe is 50 Hertz. That in combination with the number of poles that the motor has will determine its speed. And I will put the formula on the screen, but this is easy to look up. Basically a four pole motor at 60 Hertz will run just under 1800 RPM. I say just under because the motor has to slip a little bit. If the rotor actually catches up with the spinning magnetic field, then there's no more relative motion. And you remember that I told you, you have to have relative motion in order for there to be a force acting on the shaft. If it catches up and reaches 1800 RPM, then it loses the relative motion. There's no force on the rotor and it begins to lag behind. Well, now there's relative motion again and it keeps pulling. This is generally called slip speed. And that's the actual running speed of the motor. Generally, it's about 1750, between 1700 and, and just under 1800 RPM. Again, for a four pole induction motor. With that being said, if you reduce the voltage to a motor, you're not changing the line frequency. You're only changing the voltage. Let me show you. All right, we're gonna finish this segment on my phone here. We've got my variable transformer set up so that I can show you what happens when you lower the voltage to a single phase induction motor. And then also we're gonna try this light dimmer switch. Right now I am measuring about 45 or so volts. So let's get that up to 120. This is a basic line voltage from the wall here in the US, 120 volts. And if I flip this over the Hertz, it's about 60 Hertz, 59.9. Maybe they need to turn the generator up a little bit. 60 Hertz, this is basic line frequency. And so if my formula is correct, my motor should run just under 1800 RPM. Let's give it a shot. As you can see, the voltage dropped a little bit through this line because this is where the, the motor is plugged in. And if we measure the speed, and there it is. It's about 1785 or so. This is a four pole motor, and so that's correct. I would expect it to be 1780 RPM, or just under 1800. So I'm gonna lower this to about 100 volts. Ah, eh, close enough. As you can see, 1788. We're at about 64 volts from my transformer. And we're still registering 1780, about 1780 RPM. And my motor is actually starting to make a noise now. But the point that I wanna make is even at half the voltage, the speed is the same. So one thing I wanna point out here is if I had this motor under load, if some, there was a belt here and I was driving some kind of machinery, the motor would be going slower. So I don't wanna make any confusions here about what you just saw. The motor would begin to slip. Eventually you get to a point where the voltage is so low, the motor is just starving. It can't produce a strong enough magnetic field to keep up with the spinning magnetic field. The motor is completely saturated as far as the amount of current it can flow through the rotor and it begins to slow back down. You've passed the point where the motor can keep up. But this is damaging to the motor because you're drawing more amps than you should be drawing, and that's not good. But what about something like a light dimmer switch? If you were using a light dimmer switch, this has a triac inside. Now, old dimmer switches used to use a, a, a rheostat or um, a variable resistor, which would actually increase the resistance in the line, and that would make the lights dim because there was more load. In this case, we're actually flipping the light on and off very rapidly, so fast that you don't see the light flickering. You just perceive it as being dimmer. Well, what happens when you do that to a motor? Well, uh, presumably the motor is being flipped on and off very rapidly, right? So it's not just that uh, there's a lower voltage, there's no voltage for brief periods and therefore the magnetic field is gone. So the motor will kind of coast intermittently, right? Well, what kind of effect does that have? I can show you. All right, slightly different setup this time. This time, this guy is plugged directly into the wall. It's not plugged into the transformer. And my light dimmer switch is now wired in the series. So you can see I've got 122 volts from the wall. 
I'm gonna start by turning it all the way up. And just like before, 1787. And if I start to turn it down, I've turned it about halfway already. And we got 1787. All right, so the light dimmer switch is turned all the way down to just before off. Seventeen eighty-five. Now I don't want to run it too long like that. I don't, I don't want to potentially damage my motor. But the point that I want to make is the motor is chasing line frequency. It doesn't care if you're flipping the circuit on and off. The motor may coast for a moment in between uh, when the circuit is off. But as soon as it comes back on, now there's a whole lot of relative motion between the, the spinning magnetic field and the rotor. And it will uh, very quickly catch back up. Notice that when you kick the motor on, it goes from zero to uh, 1800 RPM or just under in less than a second. The transition is very fast, so it's not turning it off and on doesn't do the kind of job you want. Of course, you're gonna have a very similar effect to uh, what I described earlier. If this is hooked up to a load, uh, it will begin to slow down and it kind of seems like it's working, but that's not the way to go. One more thing I wanna mention while I'm here is something like this. I got this router speed controller. As you can see, it says, do not use with brushless type motors. This is a brushless motor. And by the way, this works with a Triac the same way this does. So now you know, light dimmer switches, router speed controllers, it even tells you on the label, don't use it with brushless motors. And that's because it, this is not designed to work with that. It turns out that the only good way to change the speed of an induction motor is by changing one of the variables in the formula I showed you earlier. Since we can't change the number of poles in the motor, we need to change the frequency. And that's where variable frequency drives come in. This is a VFD. It's designed to control the speed of induction motors. The only thing is you can't buy these for single phase induction motors. Uh, I have searched uh, quite a bit and I believe it was last year I managed to find one that worked for a special type of 240 volt single phase motor and I could not find another one and when I when I knew I was going to make this video I had a hard time finding it again and that's because there's so many complications with changing the speed of a single phase motor for example you have the starter winding that you have to deal with at low speeds the starter winding will kick back on among other problems so this is actually a three phase motor and nearly every VFD that I've found, well every VFD that I have found, except for the one that I can't find again, is for three phase motors like this. But if you change the frequency from 60 hertz or 50 hertz to something else, you can use that to vary the speed of the motor. And I'll show you. So this is just a little potentiometer which gives feedback to my uh, VFD. Now this is quite a powerful motor so I don't want to turn it up too high but I just want to give you the idea. This is a four horsepower three phase motor. So a VFD is the only proper way to vary the speed of an induction motor. Trying to run a single phase motor, especially a capacitor start single phase motor with a VFD can lead to many problems. You uh, might have issues with a centrifugal switch if you have one of those. The starter winding could kick back on whatever mechanism starts it. Uh, there's several reasons why people don't make VFDs for the single phase induction motor. If you got any other questions about this topic, feel free to post it down in the comments. I love to talk about this kind of stuff. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, I'm going to put give you two playlists here. The one on this side will be about how motors function. And the one on this side will be about how to wire motors and how to uh, change the speed, how to reverse their rotation. If you want to subscribe and join my little community here, you can hit the subscribe button that'll pop up down here. Until next time, thanks for watching.